I had a really wonderful opportunity to talk with Jessica, who uh, runs Northern Legacy Dogos, about the Dogo Argentino breed. So she has lots of great information. She actually uses her dogs for what they were bred to do, which is hunting. Um, so I hope you find this informative. It's definitely a unique breed. Uh, something that you should definitely look into, learn a lot about before you uh, decide to take one into your home. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to her or you can let me know and I'd be happy ch to chat with you as well. I hope you all enjoy it. All right, so how long have you been breeding? I've been breeding for, well, I had one litter, but I've been in the breed for about 10 years. Okay. Do you show or do you use them for working or a little both? A little bit of both. Primarily more working than showing. I've been to a couple shows. Okay. Um, my older female, my foundation female doesn't like showing. Okay. So, um, but I've hunted them several, several times. I drive down to Arkansas and Texas and um, they've been in the woods. They've been to catching competitions. So primarily working. Okay. Um, at what age can you start teaching him, them to do the work? So my puppies that I have now, I kept two of them out of my last litter. They both caught pigs by seven months old. Okay. And the funny thing is I, you don't, you don't teach them. You show them a pig and they know exactly what to do. They actually will catch exactly where they need to catch. It's all so ingrained in them that okay. they just know what to do. Okay. Um, and they're a pretty short coat breed. They don't require a whole lot of bathing, grooming, unless they get dirty, right? That's correct. Um, I actually rarely bathe my dogs. Their hair is a length and a coarseness that even if they get muddy, if you let it dry, the dirt just falls off. Okay. That's handy. It is handy. <laughs> um, does the breed have any common health problems or things that people should be aware of prior to looking at a breeder or asking a breeder? Yes, so primarily they do suffer from pigmentary related deafness, just like Dalmatians. Okay. Um, every breeder should be doing hearing testing on every puppy, on every litter. And that is done around six to seven weeks of age. And that way, you know, if, if they're full hearing, if they're unilaterally hearing, or if they're completely deaf, okay. um, there's, a, there's also, I know, have known a couple of them to get bloat. If they're a large breed, deeper chested dogs, it's not that they're specifically genetically predisposed to that, but it happens. Right. Um, hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, because they're a large breed dog, um, a lot of unscrupulous breeders have been having more dogs pop up with orthopedic issues. Okay. But so there is a standard of testing now through um, the Dogo Argentina Club of America, but it's like they literally recommend testing everything. So okay. heart, hips, knees, eyes, thyroid, like the whole thing. But basically hearing is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. Um, ortho orthopedic issues is a huge thing. And I have actually heard some of them can be, I've heard of Dogos having sudden rage syndrome, which pops up here and there. A lot of behavioral, mostly behavioral, not necessarily medical yeah. concerns. Okay. Um, as far as activity level, are they a super active breed? Do you think they should be in home? yard or is somebody who goes hiking every weekend going to be giving enough exercise so they need activity every single day maybe not they don't need like a 10 mile walk or anything there is certain things and this is what I tell my puppy owners too you don't have to take them for a 10 mile hike every single day but they are a breed that's been bred to hunt for an entire day uh, my dogs specifically my dogs when I run them, they have tracking collars and GPS collars and it tracks how long they are for, how long they go for. 
Yeah. My, my dogs have gone for seven to 10 miles in a day and they're not tired. Okay. So, but you know, physical activity, I have a fenced in yard just to give them the ability to run and run around. Um, I also do obedience work every day to work their brain because that makes them tired. So, so yeah, not just straight physical activity, but they are a pretty active dog, but they also do like to nap. Like as I'm talking with you, I have two of my dogs right now sleeping Okay. with me. Yeah. And how responsive are they to training? Does it take a lot of repetitions to teach them something new or do they pick it up pretty fast? They pick it up fast, but they're not a people pleasing kind of breed. Okay. Um, they're bred to be able to make their own decisions far away from their people. Um, okay. So they're really independent thinkers and that makes them very stubborn. Okay. Are they difficult to house train or are they pretty easy to house train? Um, with my experience, they're pretty easy to house train. Um, they don't really like to be in their own mess. So my all my dogs were house trained by a year old. Okay. That's pretty good. Um, how long should people expect to spend training their dog per day time? So at least, I would say at least an hour every day for an adult dog. Um, with my puppies, I broke it up five, 10, 15 minutes at a time, depending. Um, they definitely will tell you when they've had enough, they just aren't focusing anymore. They're not doing well, they need a break. But and for the uh, longevity of training every day for the rest of their lives, because they will test you every day. Mm -hmm. They will, they know um, if you're not there to correct them, they will do naughty stuff. They know. Yeah. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> and they're a pretty large breed, right? They get pretty big. 90 to 100 pounds is the standard weights written in the breed standard um there are outliers so there's dogs that are smaller my female that i have my older female 65 pounds um and i've also had dogs that are larger so my male that i had that recently passed away last year was actually 140 pounds okay how long do they usually live typical lifespan 10 to 12 years um okay. They're relatively healthy for being a large breed dog. So with routine vet care and preventative care and good nutrition, like they can live for quite a while. With the hunting instinct that they have, do they do okay in houses with small critters like cats or bunnies or birds? And do they do okay with houses with small children that run around a lot? Or is it something that if you're gonna have those things, you should get a puppy and not bring in an adult. So it really depends. It really depends on the individual dog. So I have seen, <clears throat> I do work with um, a Dogo rescue. I have friends that are in the Dogo rescue and I've seen the, some of their adult dogs that they've rehomed that do really well. They, okay. it, it's really dependent on the individual. So funny thing, I have three dogs. Um, two of, they're all related. One is a mother, two is a siblings. Uh, my dad, I live with my dad. He has a cat. Mm -hmm. My older female has always hated the cat, but you can call her off. She'll mess with the cat, but she won't kill it if you're watching her. Yeah. My male puppy will 100% kill the cat if he gets a chance. You can't call him off. And then his sister is best friends with the cat. Okay. So it depends. And they've all been raised the exact same way. Um, they've never seen a cat before. Just one decided that they want two out of the three decided they want to eat the cat. The other one wants to be friends with the cat. Um, as far as children running around being crazy, it's just like with any dog. If you teach the dog and teach the children how to be respectful of each other and interact with each other appropriately, they do well. Um, I don't have kids. My dogs are not raised with kids, but even in a later, at a later age, they've been able to be integrated into situations with younger kids while the kids, you know, kids that know how to interact with dogs. Like you don't run okay. up to a strange dog and give it a hug, you kiss it yeah. on his face, that kind of thing. Right. Okay. As far as 
adult strangers coming into the home do they if you have adult visitors are they usually pretty receptive to that does their reaction to strangers differ in the home versus out of the home or does that depend a lot upon how they're raised it depends on the individual dog um so they were intended not only for primarily for hunting but mm -hmm. also for a little bit of home defense. They're used in Argentina still to defend um, people's homes. And okay. so they, we call it stranger danger. Yep. Your stranger danger is strong. Um, I like my dogs to be able to have a good on and off switch. So if I tell, a, tell them a person is fine, they should be fine with it. Yep. Um, there are, you know, every hurt. Sometimes people, you don't always know people. So sometimes my dogs, I have to put them up. There's a couple people here and there that they just won't, they won't let into my house. Okay. And strangers outside of the home with my dogs, I prefer if they, if that person not, is not having anything to do with them, I don't want them to have anything to do with that person. I yeah. don't want them to just yell at somebody across the street for no reason. So I try to right. teach my dogs to be respectful of strangers. Um, but for the most part, if a stranger walks up and wants to pet my dog, the, the answer is no. My dogs don't like it. So. Yeah. And the dogs will probably bark at them. Okay. So kind of mostly aloof, but can accept it if if they want to in certain situations. Yes, but I always have all my dogs are um, kennel trained. So if I have to put them up, yep. I usually do. Okay. Yeah, that's always a good option to have a safe place to confine if there's somebody that they don't necessarily love. Right. Are they the kind of breed who tends to bond to one person or if they're in a multi-adult household, do they love everybody equally or do they like pick their favorites? I feel like they do pick their favorites. Okay. Um, I've definitely seen, I've been in a multi-adult hot well, I, I am currently in in a in the past I was with a past relationship and um the dogs if they if they're if you're not their person they like you they enjoy spending time with you they won't respect you and they won't listen to you okay does it matter who trains them do they tend to like go to the person who spends the most time putting effort in or do they just kind of like I like you because you have food it's more like the person that spends the most time with them and creates that bond with them, that training. It's a, I feel like they have to build a respect rapport with that person. Okay. Um, so they have to know that they can trust you. It's a trust thing. It's a respect thing for sure. Yep. Okay. So if somebody doesn't have the opportunity like you do to take their dog hunting, what are some other outlets that would be a good option for this breed? So the three things that the three needs that this breed has to have met every day, the, the desire to chase, the desire to bite, the desire to pull. Those are the three things that I've found that they have the desire to do. And if those needs are all met, along with having good mental stimulation and physical stimulation, they're pretty happy. So I have a spring pole in my front yard, I'll hang it off my tree. They pull and they play with that. Um, I will throw, I have a basketball in the front yard. They don't retrieve, they don't bring it back, but I'll okay. throw the basketball, roll it across the yard so they can chase it and they catch mm -hmm. it. So they like that. Um, I've also heard like, um, trying to think. Yep, I can't think of the word, but um, like lure, oh, lure coursing. Some people you can get like a lure coursing set up in your own yard. They would love that. Okay. Um, but as long as you have the ability to like allow them to run, chase, bite, and pull, then they are okay. happy. Okay. So there, there are definitely lots of sports out there for them. Yes. When you do use them for hunting, do they do the tracking part too? Or do you kind of together find um, the pigs and then send the dogs out? Or how does that work? So every hunter is going to be different. But the, the way the dogo was designed, its intended purpose is to be able to hunt, track, and catch its own pig. 
It was okay. intended more of a heavy hound than like okay. a like a mastiff. Okay. So they do have a good nose. Um, some people will do depending on their where they're hunting. They will have hound dogs, cur dogs on the ground. They'll yeah. bay up a pig, and then they call them lead in catch dogs, where you will come in with your dogo on a leash, and as soon as you get within sight of that pig, you let the dog go. Okay. Some sometimes people will run their catch dogs or dogos with their hounds. And there are some people that run dogo only packs. So okay. they have no hounds whatsoever. And the dogs run and find their pigs. Okay. My dogs, my dogs, um, they are able to track and find their own pigs and catch. Um, I I specifically with my program focused on preserving the nose of the breed yep. so so that's another thing um they have like a hound nose so like imagine a beagle yeah, yeah. get in trouble yeah they take off after fun smells i suppose yes do you have to teach them to track or do they like once they understand that this smell means i get to go chase and catch something they pick it up pretty fast so I did both. Um, I actually did like um, tracking training with one of my older dogs. And then with one of my puppies, I just wanted to see how her nose was. Yeah. I did not do any formal tracker training with her, um, but they both figured it out pretty equally. So I don't think that doing tracking training is necessary 100%. Okay. As long as it's associated with catching something at the end. Yes. Well, they even... Um, yeah, you have to make that connection. Obviously, there's not pigs up here. So yeah. rabbits, birds, that kind of thing they'll chase. Okay. What do you love most about the breed? I love their personalities and their loyalty. They are just a super fun, the quirky, like I had, I had Rottweilers and pit bulls before I found the breed. I yeah. just like, I like a good challenge. Not going to lie. I do. They're very challenging. They keep me on my toes. Um, they're funny. They are, they're independent enough. They, they, and they're sensitive. They remind me a lot of like a herding breed. They're a little sensitive. They're a little independent. Okay. And then, um, and then they're stubborn too. And I just, okay. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, they are, since they are a larger breed, do you find that it takes them a while to kind of reach that maturity or is it like between one and two, or does it take them a little longer than that before they start acting less puppy-like and more adult-like? So yes, it does take them around, tell about two to three okay. mentally. And that's uh, physically too. They They fill out a little slower. They're not usually full grown until about three. So definitely mentally takes them until about two to three to really come into their own. Um, and that's actually, they, it's like the like terrible twos for them. Yeah. Once they hit that two to three age and they hit their mental maturity, um, a lot of training or socialization doors for them are shut. Okay. So, I mean, some, they, every individual is different. Um, I had a dog that after two, he liked five people. Okay. And he was my 140 pound male. He was incredibly aggressive. He had to be muzzle trained to be in public. And I mean, he was good once he was like that. And then, um, the dogs that I have now, definitely a little bit more social. Okay. They can, they don't have to be muzzle trained. They're better out in public, but yeah, around two to three, if you haven't had a lot of socialization, if you hadn't put that work in to set that good foundation, then it's going to be a little bit of an uphill battle. Yeah. Foundation's important. Yes. Very things. important. Very important. Especially with these cute little jerks. Yeah. What is the most frustrating thing about the breed? their stubbornness. Um, they are not a people pleasing breed. So they really don't always care about what you want. So training is difficult. Okay. Getting them to do what you want is difficult. Um, 
I, it's training They're Yeah. That's the most frustrating. That's the most frustrating. Like they yeah. can't, they're not a breed that you can just bring to somebody's house and just let them run in the backyard with everybody else's dogs. They're not a breed that you can yeah. bring to the dog park. They're not a breed. They're just really, they're just really interesting and challenging and they're not, um, they're not for someone that wants a dog like that to bring to right. the dog park and have an apartment and bring to everybody's house. Like, yeah, they will do good until they don't. Right. Hard when something big doesn't. Yes. And then if somebody is like, yes, this is exactly the breed that I want. I want to do hunting. It's perfect for what I want. How would they get a hold of you? Uh, I actually, I have a Facebook um, kennel page. I have an Instagram and I also do, I'm on Good Dog. A lot of my interests come through there. Um, I personally, when somebody shows interest in the breed, I do, I have screening questions that I ask first when they do the application. And I will also do like a phone interview beforehand. Okay. Um, it's just, I've screened so many people and even the people that have gotten dogs from me two years later, I've had two people call me and tell me that they don't think they can handle the dog and they want to give it back. So I try my best to screen so much and ask so many questions, but you can only do right your best. And is this a breed that you think a person who has never, ever owned a dog before would be able to be successful owning? I think that the chances of that are very, very low. Okay. I do. I think that this dog has such a high chance for failure. They're super challenging breed. I don't think they are a good breed for first time dog owners. I think yep. they need a more forgiving breed. This breed is not very forgiving when it okay. comes to training or lack thereof or lack of socialization and boundaries. Okay. Okay. Are they a breed that tends to like remember a specific thing worked once and try it over and over again? Like, well, I opened the trash can once and there was something good in it. Maybe I'll do that again, even months later. Or if you interrupt that behavior and direct them to something else, do they direct okay? No, they remember everything. Okay. They remember everything. That one time I opened the door three years ago, I'm going to do that again. They will try that over and over again. Okay. So, so once they, once they figure out how to, once they figure out how to open the trash can or once they figure out how to get out of the fence, then they're going to keep doing it until you figure out how to block that or prevent them from doing it. Okay. So puppy proofing very important yes yes and even puppy proofing forever okay yes um is there anything else that you think somebody looking into this breed should know or think about or consider before looking into breeders or thinking about taking one home yes so not all, as far as the breeder part of it, not all breeders are created equal. Um, just because it has a good price point on it does not mean that you're getting the best dog out there, especially okay. with, especially with hunting breeds or this specific breed. You want to make sure that you're getting a person, a breeder that breeds for temperament and for functionality, because then you'll, you won't get a hot orthopedic mess. And you won't get a dog that is completely unstable in its head because that happens. And when you have a hundred pound dog that is super unpredictable, that is a huge liability. And they have been, there's reports in the United States, even of, of this breed killing people. So okay. they, they have the power, they absolutely have the power to kill people and they have. And so that's part of protecting the breed, not making sure you get it, getting it from a reputable breeder that knows what they're doing. Maybe they don't have to show their dogs. They don't have to necessarily hunt their dogs, but they have to know their dogs like the back of their hand. And they mm -hmm. have to be able to prove that to you verbally that, 
and maybe have proof of what the dog where the dogs have come from and things like that. I personally would not get another dog from someone who doesn't work their dog. Because okay. that is the best way to know if that dog is mentally where it needs to be is if it can do the job it was meant to do. Right. Where would somebody go to start looking for to find a reputable breeder? Reaching out to um, the dog club. So Dogo Argentino Club of America is a good resource. Um, I will say that they don't have an expansive list of breeders, but just looking around, there's a, unfortunately, there's a lot of breeders that have been popping up. So just look around and listen and read and observe. You can ask a lot of questions, um, have a list of the things that you're looking for. So health, health testing should be really important to them yeah. if they're looking for a puppy, um, not necessarily like how is a per how's the dog registered or what are the bloodlines? If you're just looking for a really good stable dog, get it from a person that works their dogs, hunts yeah. their dogs, because they are not going to keep something on their yard because it's it's around their kids, it's around their grandkids. They're not going to keep an unstable dog on the yard for any reason at all. They will right. not pass that on because they don't care about the money. They want to right. put the best foot forward for the breed. And that's the biggest thing, trying to differentiate between who's doing it for the breed and who's doing it for money. Right. And then um, the other thing to be, just be aware of, do your research about the breed. Don't just watch one interview or read one article and think you know everything. Right. Um, this breed, yes, was intended to work as a pack and hunt in the woods, but they have a lot of dog aggression same-sex dog aggression is very common in the breed okay. you can't you can't have all your dogs hanging out with you at the same time there's probably going to be a fight when they're out in the okay. woods working they can shut it off when they're in the home hanging out um my dogs have gotten in a fight over food before so but they're fine okay. when they're working okay if if they have a direction to go together it's better but if they're just hanging out, they can cause problems. Yes, they very much need structure. They very much need a job. They need an end goal. And then they're really good at working together. Okay. Yep. And then like, just know the history of the breed. There's the, and the breed creator wrote a book about how he made the breed, what they were intended for, like the dirty, the dirty secret of the Dogo community is they were intended, they were used for hunting and for dog fighting. So okay. you have some dogs that you can never have with another dog. Right. Do you know what the title of that book is? I think it's just El Dogo Argentino. Okay. Yeah, I think it's in Spanish, but I think there's an English um, translation. Translation, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Is there anything else you want to add that you want people to know? I can't think of anything specifically, but I just want people to know that if they really are considering having one of, a, a, one of these amazing dogs in their house, ask questions, ask a lot of questions. And if you have never seen one before, reach out to somebody that uh, maybe a local breeder you may you might not want to get a dog from them but ask them if you can come see their dogs there's okay. so many dogs that have been popping up all over the place and then if you are not interested in getting a a puppy or from a breeder dc dogos is the only dogo specific rescue in the country and they are amazing okay. yeah okay. sounds great thank you very much for your time yeah, thank you. This is fun. Yeah, I uh, learned a lot. They're, they're a less well-known breed for sure. They definitely are. And so I'm very blessed to have the dogs that I have and to have the, the knowledge. And I just want to share it with people. I want to help educate people as much as possible. Well, thank you very much. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, you too.